Now trends are often something that is referred to that might be something that is popular for a period of time, but not necessarily for the long term. However, in today's video, I'm gonna show you five products that are very much trending products in the last year or so that I feel are gonna stick around for a little while longer and make your game just that little bit easier. There will also be a bonus reveal at the end of the video, which a product which I think is gonna be the next trend and something that I'm gonna introduce into my own game very shortly, so don't go anywhere. So let's kick things off with what is without doubt the number one trending product, in my opinion, over the last couple of years, and it is, of course, the rebirth of the Mini Driver. Now, the Mini Driver first came along from TaylorMade. We've seen, is it three or four iterations, and now Callaway have followed suit, and from what I hear, there's a couple more that are gonna be making their way in other manufacturers' lineups. Why is a Mini Driver so good? Well, first of all, from anybody who's ever tried one, I've not heard a bad report. And that for me is the glowing recommendation that you need to hear. I think there's a lot of skeptics that haven't tried them that perhaps question them, but everyone who tries a Mini Driver oh, seems to get on with them. They like them. And there's two things in particular that make Mini Drivers so appealing. One is they've got some realistic loft on them as an option to a main driver. So generally they come in at around 12, 13 degrees aloft. They're also a shorter shaft, which means we've got greater control. I've done plenty of videos on why that is really important to average golfers. But for my mind, standing on a tee, wants control, wanting still great ball speed, want to launch the ball as well. All the things, again, that average golfers perhaps struggle with, with a driver in their hand, then the Mini Driver offers you a real alternative. And as far as trends go, all I can see is this further developing and every major brand will have a Mini Driver in their lineup in 2025. Get up, get up. Well, that's not bad and we're certainly not in the water, which was the main thing. And this is another trend that we've seen develop over the last few years, but I see it on virtually every wedge and that's full face grooves. Now, full face grooves for me are kind of an obvious thing and they make plenty of sense, especially for average golfers. Again, we make plenty of contact in and around the club face, but grooves are intended to remove water, a bit of rain in the air today. Also debris and grass from the contact element that you make between club and ball. So why not put them all over the club face? Because the more we can move and the better contact we can get within a uh, uh, club on ball, then all the better. It especially becomes a bit more prevalent when you're looking to open that club face up a little bit and slide that club face across a shot, across a ball. So I think it's more applicable in the higher lofted wedges, but it's something that I think we're gonna see more and more of. I think pretty much every wedge you're gonna see in the future will adopt full face grooves. It's only gonna be the golfer that prefers that traditional look that is not gonna want them in my opinion. So full face grooves, another trend, and why not? Now that is another club that we're gonna see plenty more of in my opinion. Seven woods, maybe even nine woods, and maybe with a bit more loft even than that, because high lofted fairway woods have become very much flavor of the month in the last year or so. I think one of the main reasons being is people like Dustin Johnson stuck one in the bag, and all of a sudden those average golfers seen that it was okay for us to reach for a fairway wood with plenty of loft. They just do things that we find difficult really, really well, and that's launched the ball very high. That's often to do with the CG placements in fairway woods. They also have fast ball speeds, which again, something we struggle with, and they carry a distance that we struggle. So the long end of the bag becomes so much easier when you've got a lofted fairway wood in hand. So for me, it's a trend that is only gonna keep on shifting towards more and more of the manufacturers providing more options in this style of golf club. That's right, that it? Oh, it's too long. That's actually bounced through the green. And maybe one of the issues you might find with this type of club, but without doubt, they're still gonna see plenty of them. And that is what I call hybrid irons. And that's a mix between a hybrid 
and a regular iron. And we've seen plenty of them. We've seen a company called by the name of Eleven who've brought out a full set of hybrids from, I think it's three through to pitching wedge. Every manufacturer has now also made hybrids available in kind of five, six, seven, eight, and nine options, which again, to me, shows where the trend has gone and a realization that regular irons are more difficult to hit than hybrid type clubs. And the original, in my opinion, was from Cleveland, and that's where I've just hit there. It's their Halo Irons and Halo XL, the latest model. It's, in my opinion, not the best thing to look at, but you can't argue with the results and what it does very, very effectively indeed. So yes, there are compromises to make with these type of clubs, but they assist you again in elements and areas that we really struggle with as average golfers and a trend once again that I only see continuing into 2025 and one that's about to stick and I think it's a real good option for many golfers who are struggling with a traditional iron this is an area that you should start to consider. Now last but not least is in my opinion without doubt the most trending product over the last 12 months and it's a putter it's a style of putter and we're going to call them zero torque balanced or in Lab's case to first produce these style of putters, lie angle balanced. Now, I think it's fair to say, when we first see Adam Scott with one of these things in his hand, most golfers scoffed at the idea of this uh, very, very different style of putter. And I think in the first review I did, which was probably two years ago, the feedback in the comments section was, I'd gone pretty crazy when I was absolutely blown away just at how good this thing was. Fast forward 18 months, two years, and it's a very different story. The lab putters are very much making their way into many of the bags of the professionals out on tour. We're seeing more and more. And now in the last few weeks, PXG have just released an Allen putter, which is their zero torque balance putter. Very much the same principles of that of lab. And to me, it's an absolute no brainer. They, what do they do? Well, for those of you who haven't tried one, they keep the putter face as square as possible through that impact position or throughout the stroke to be quite honest with you and they eliminate twisting that's where that zero torque element comes in and for anybody who hasn't tried one if you question it try them and you soon change your mind and that is everybody i've spoken to has nothing but positivity about this style of putter and i think as you've seen with pxg have just brought this out my feeling is that going into next year you're going to see again every major brand will have a putter that is face balanced in the same way that these two are and trust me they're going to make your life a whole lot easier that one could go in that's the right club how nice is that a little bit of check and grab as well and he's seen us in this position earlier on in a video and uh, at that moment i hit another shot with the club i've got in hand but it's not the club that i'm looking at as being a trending product that i think is going to further develop in the next year or two this is my sort of bonus ball this is my uh interesting addition to a seven iron that i've been practicing with let's say and it's something that i would really consider uh, adopting and paying a closer look to in the weeks ahead and maybe like I said in my own personal game. Jumbo Grips largely promoted via Bryson and they've had a little bit of an effort at trying to promote these things and they've I think not quite got there as yet but I do think I've seen a lot of new Jumbo Grips that have become available and I think you're going to see more and more of them in the golf stores in the coming months and certainly into 2025 and I think if you give them a go you'll realize there are lots of benefits that will help again a number of average golfers and in my case the main benefit being that eliminates me being too handsy eliminates that and takes that out of the equation if you like and I've certainly found in the testing that I've done so far when I had a little go of them uh, a year or two ago I was really really impressed I didn't have the sort of um, I wasn't able to persuade myself to go all in and and try these across the bag but I think like I said it's a trending product that you will see more and more of next year and from manufacturers that is grip manufacturers they certainly start to pay more attention to this type of grip and I think like I said it's going to be something you'll see a lot of in 2025.